All right, today we're going to talk about loop rates and cycle times and improvements done in Betaflight 4.2 to increase efficiency of the operations, reduce CPU utilization, and reduce jitter that we get in the cycle times. In a previous video I made, which I'll link up above, we talked about the native gyro rate sampling, filtering, and schedule restructuring done by Bruce in Betaflight 4.2 to improve CPU utilization and consistency of cycle times. As a result, when you go into Betaflight 4.2 now, which is going to be released probably sometime in June, you will see that your gyro update frequency is now locked to match whatever the gyro's native sampling rate is. So for InvenSense gyros or TDK, TDK bought InvenSense, that's 8K. For a Bosch BMI gyro, that's 3.2K. And then you can still select here your loop rate that you want, 8K, 4K, so on and so forth. So right here on this F4 board, you can see I have 8K, 8K, DSHOT 600 with RPM filter enabled. And I'm running around, at least on this metric down here, 10% utilization. But that is a horrible metric to look at. This really should be removed off the configurator. If you're going to look at anything, you want to look over at the cycle times here and making sure that that is 125 for 8K or 250 for 4K and to see if that's spiking up above 125 on certain instances. The best thing to go look at is go to the CLI and here type tasks and then you can see your percentage here for the loop rate. So it's actually more of a 60% utilization on the PID loop rate. Uh, the filter loop is 20% and the gyro is 12%. Ultimately these need to be below 100. So this is pretty critical. But a more critical thing is that cycle time stability down here that you can see as 125. So what you can do to see your loop time stability in flight is in black box, you can record the cycle time debug, which is one of the oldest, I think it's the first debug that's actually in beta flight. One really important thing though, is you wanna set your logging rate really low. Special thanks to Brian White for focusing some attention on this, but black box logging actually puts a lot of load on the CPU, especially at higher logging rates. So 500 Hertz or one kilohertz, it's not so bad, but two kilohertz for an eight, it's ridiculous. Uh, it would totally max out the CPU, cause all kinds of loop time jitter and instability. So you gotta keep that in mind when, of course, recording cycle times or any logging you do. Honestly, I wasn't aware of the effect of this until Brian pointed it out, the differential between loop time stability with black box off versus black box on. I know from now on, I was always recommending 2K logging rates. I'm gonna probably be switching that recommendation back to the original that used to be out for so long, 1K. The only problem with 1K logging rate is when you have a smaller craft, a lot of times you'll have motor noise above 500 Hertz and you won't be able to see that at a 1K logging rate because the Nyquist limit, and you'll see in Black Box Explorer when you look at the, the noise spectrums, they only go up to 500 Hertz because at a 1K logging rate, which Nyquist is whatever half your logging rate is. So that's a little bit of difficulty, but when you have a five inch, a lot of times the noise really isn't going above 500 Hertz. The other thing is when I'm not real, I'm not gonna just be logging all the time. Uh, I'm gonna have that definitely, it's always on a switch, but I might change things around so that logging is off by default and I can turn it on whenever I really wanna take a look at it. So do keep in mind when we're on the desk and on the bench here, we're not really capturing when black box is on unless you would turn that on. And also that you know, it's it's not, the quadcopter's not really flying on the bench. So you want to get it when it's in flight. The only way to really do that is to put on logging. And if we have a stable loop with logging turned on, well, then, you know, obviously with logging turned off, it's going to be stable as well. So taking a look at this debug mode, this is the cycle time debug mode. And just looking at debug trace zero and one, this is the cycle time. And then this is the CPU load. There's other traces in there with motor updates, uh, rates, and things of that nature. We're not going to get into that. I'll drop a link below where you can see all the debug modes in Betaflight. Well, it's not all of them. It's the ones I've documented so far. And it talks about all the different traces and gives a little detail about what they are. This you can see is Betaflight 4.1. Now this quad has a GPS. It also has a DJI Air unit. So it's sending the OSD information back through the MSP protocol to the DJI Air unit. And you can see on here, there's lots of loop time instability. This was at 4K 4K on Betaflight 4.1 with RPM filter enabled. 
and you can see generally here the loop rate what should be 250 was 251 but then in some cases spiked up to 1000 so it missed four PID loop cycles with this big spike we looked at this a little bit in detail it seemed to be something that had to do with the CMS which is the goggle uh, OSD refresh stuff so I'm thinking that's linked to something with the MSP DJI I don't really know flashed it up to Betaflight 4.2 this problem goes away and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So now we have up on the screen now is Betaflight 4.1 with the 4K, 4K, 1K logging rate, Betaflight 4.2 with the 8K, 1K logging rate, and then Betaflight 4.2 again with the 4K, 1K logging rate. These were all the same rig. You can see obviously the massive improvement from 4.1 to 4.2. You can see though, however, there's still some jitter going on in the cycle times with 8K, 8K, gyro loop, PID loop, and then a 1K logging rate. Uh, you know, would that be there with logging off totally? You know, maybe not. And we're not so much worried about the stuff below at the bottom. It's when it goes above that's when we're you know more concerned and how frequent is that because obviously that means the calculations it's doing weren't done in time it missed that PID loop that motor update and then it waited to the next one and sent the data out now conversely over here with you know 8k on the gyro since it's locked and then 4k for the PID loop rate and a 1k logging rate you can see how much more stable that is this issue over here with loop rate cycle time instability it's not just a Betaflight 4.1 thing. That's just how Betaflight has been for a really long time. So, you know, Betaflight 3.3, Betaflight 3.5, Betaflight 4.0, Betaflight 4.1. Until this restructuring got done with Betaflight 4.2, obviously this is the result you would expect to see. Now, I think these larger spikes that you're seeing here are indicative of the DJI and something going on with that, with the uh, OSD, that's a speculation, but you can still see it down through here uh, with this jitter that we're getting uh, that's kind of overshadowed by the larger spikes. You can still see that. And that's at, again, 4K, 4K, uh, D-Shot 300. So we're definitely seeing the improvements done by the restructuring and the work to optimize the loop rates uh, that Bruce took on for Betaflight, again, 4.2. Now here's some other logs I was looking at. I was trying to get the logging rate up a little higher and see you know, is, is there a balance there where a 2K logging rate is okay? Because that's honestly what I've used a lot in the past and I'd still love to keep using. But it does have a, a pretty high load on it. With this test, we have the RPM filter turned off. And I noticed that the jitter actually increased with the RPM filter turned off, which struck me by surprise. But then I remembered that there's also scheduler optimization that Joe Lucid uh, proposed that only turned on when the RPM filter was on. And you can turn that on manually, and I'll show you that here in a second. But over here is the same thing, again, 2K, so there's some spikes up here that wouldn't be there at a 1K logging rate or 500 hertz logging rate. But you can see how these scheduler improvements made a big difference in loop time stability with, you know, with having the RPM filter turned off. Again, when the RPM filter is enabled, this scheduler optimization turns on automatically by default. However, if you have RPM filter disabled, it's something you may want to consider enabling. So let's pop over to the configurator and show you what I'm talking about. So I want to emphasize again, with the RPM filter enabled, the schedule improvements are on by default. However, we can see what their status is by simply going to the CLI, type in get schedule, and here you can see as auto, what auto means is when RPM filter is turned on, the scheduler optimization turns on as well. However, if the RPM filter is disabled, that tab on the configuration tab we just looked at, then that means the schedule optimization is off. You can override this simply by copying this entry here. So I'm going to window it, hit copy. We're going to type in set and then paste it. And then we're just going to type in on hit enter and then save. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn on the schedule or optimization regardless if the RPM filter is enabled or disabled. And here's another example that this is a quad without a GPS unit. And you can see on the left, we have no RPM filter turned on, but we do have the scheduler turned off as well. And on the right, we have the RPM filter off again, but here with the scheduler enabled, you can see the stability in the, the cycle times here between the two. Now here's one of this 
F4 board without the GPS unit as well. This is an 8K, 8K with the RPM filter enabled on Betaflight 4.2. And here we had a 500 hertz logging rate, so it's basically as low as you can go on the logging rate. And you can still see some jitter at the 8K. Now, would that be there with logging disabled altogether? However, I'm not sure. Maybe Brian White can do some tests on that because he has a rig set up that he can do some sniffers on it where you can get some data extracted with logging off and see if you know we have a stable loop at AKAK DSHOT 600 with RPM filter enabled on Betaflight 4.2. So what are the takeaways with all this? Well, that the restructuring made a big difference in loop time stability and cycle times that in Betaflight 4.2 you can give AKAK DSHOT 600 a chance with RPM filter enabled and on an F4 board, obviously F7, H7, even more so. With that said, if you do have any weird behaviors, you know, don't hesitate to come in here and then drop this down to a 4K loop rate down here. And of course, when you're doing any black box logging, keep in mind lower logging rates are a lot more efficient and have a lot less CPU utilization. So, you know, anywhere probably from like a 1K logging rate, uh, if you need to collect a little bit more data, maybe up to a 2, but I would definitely not do a 4 and 8. We'll probably just max out the CPU. Finally, if you're not using the RPM filter, consider taking a look at turning the scheduler optimizations on in the CLI by typing get schedule, and then you can see we'd set it to on here, just like as shown, and that should give you some more loop time stability. Now, honestly, a lot of this stuff, you might not even notice differences between the two, but you know, having a more consistent and stable loop uh, is a fundamental that we want to get right uh, and have it the best it can be. You know, whether you would notice in flight, you know, the instability really depends how sensitive you are to things. I, you know, I don't know if you wouldn't, anybody would notice it or not, uh, especially if it's like a windy conditions day. I would think that would have more uh, impact on the, you know, what you're feeling with the quad versus some, a little bit of microseconds instability here. But with that said, if you want your rig to run to its optimal and best performance, this is some of the things to consider. Thanks again, everybody, and I hope this helped.